This is Northeast Michigan's best news source. You're waking up to WBKB Early Morning, your first look at news, weather, and sports. This is Early Morning. A former Michigan State Police Trooper in Alpena is heading to trial for allegedly assaulting several family members. Plus, Rogers City is looking to upgrade their software system. And the date has been set for the new Meyer store to break ground. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ashley Reed. For a first look at weather, let's check in with meteorologist Adam Claybon. Good Thursday morning to you, Kelsey. Only one more day until Friday. I know all of us trying to make it to that Friday, especially since temperatures have been so cold during the week. But also, Friday is going to bring us a little warmer air. But we'll talk about that in the full forecast. Eight degrees currently seeing some foggy conditions, just mostly like that mist kind of flurry stuff that you're seeing out there. That's what we are, have been seeing throughout most of the other and some also enhanced snowfall. As we take a look at our current radar, not seeing much on here, but you can see right up to our north, there is a band that's starting to sag its way farther and farther to the south. So Roger City, watch out as you head out for your morning commute on the way and posing. You'll be starting to get in on that snow band as well. But we'll continue to see the snow. Some of us has already picked up right around one to two inches. And as we take a look at our satellite and radar, this area of low pressure will continue to push off towards the east. And this is just a little clipper that has been providing the snowfall, but also on the back side, which is just about to push out of here, we'll feel the much colder air. So highs won't be too warm at all today. High of only five degrees in Alpena while dropping off below zero tonight. And we'll see that things do warm up by the weekend back in the 20s and then start to cool off after by next week. Thanks, Adam. Rogers City discussed upgrading their software systems at last night's City Council meeting. The BSA.net software edition that is currently servicing the city is becoming outdated, but this isn't out of the blue. City Clerk and Treasurer Terry Call said that an upgrade has been on the table for discussion for the past three years. I meant was my understanding was within the next year or so that software is going to be it's more and more difficult to get service for it today. Um, so most software vendors, when they put out a new version, um, they tend to stop serving the older uh, release of it. The city hopes to perform the upgrade within the next year, but Councilman McLennan said that ju before just going with the current BSA.net company's new system, he would like to see comparable prices from other companies as well. Well, Richard Smith, who recently moved to Rogers City, offered the Rogers City Area Board of Education $1 to buy the Grand Ball building, but he says he has big plans. His presentation was interesting. Let's just say that way. I've never had a presentation before the board like that. When I first approached the school board with the idea of buying this place for a dollar, I had huge mixed emotions about it. I even commented openly that it sounded like a crazy idea. Smith moved to Rogers City in November with the intent to start a small business, but then the Grand Ball Center was brought to his attention. His hope is to now turn the building into an activity center the whole community can benefit from, beginning with his one dollar. Honestly, I'm not a rich man. I don't have a lot of money. Um, and a dollar is honestly all I can afford. The building was closed about a year and a half ago after the board decided they couldn't afford to keep it open. Marks wonders how Smith would be able to maintain a building that was costing more than $30,000 a year to keep open. Somebody buys a building at $1 from a public entity and then turns around and decides he can't afford it and sell it for something else. Well, that's neg negligence on the board's behalf. But Smith feels this building has potential, and he has pitched all of his ideas for the center online for the community to review. My goal is that someone who has the financial backing can take this place and turn it into something great. It doesn't have to be done by me. Um, I have some great ideas, and I think if people will take the time to, to read those ideas, think about it, and take those ideas and turn it into something really great, that would be the perfect solution. A decision has not yet been made by the Board of Education. They do say they'd like to see a more detailed financial plan. Smith's plans for the building can be read on his website at rogercitymichiganonline.com. Former Michigan State Trooper William Adamack will be heading to trial this April after rejecting a plea deal. 50-year-old Adamack faces three counts of felonious assault plus a felony firearm charge for alleged assault involving his wife and two sons this past June. This week, his attorney told 26th Circuit Court Judge Michael Mack that his client would be rejecting the proposing plea bargain from County Prosecutor Ed Black and continue to trial. 
The proposed plea deal would have dropped two of the charges against Adamac, including the felony firearm charge. At the time of the incident, Adamac was a Michigan State Police Trooper with the Alpena Post. After being charged, he was suspended without pay until he retired this past November. The upcoming trial is expected to last three days. According to Michigan law, if convicted, the former trooper could face up to four years in jail for each assault charge plus two years for felony firearm. And a date has officially been set for groundbreaking for the new Meyer Superstore in Alpena. The new Superstore's first phase of construction will begin on May 1st. The proposed store will be situated on an approximate 20-acre parcel behind Culver's, Walgreens, and the Alpena Alcona Area Credit Union with entrances on both M32 and Bagley Street. Alpena Township Supervisor Marie Twite said Meyer also discussed the importance of a traffic light. That they have applied for uh, a variance for that light. They do want a light right across from the Walmart Drive. I believe they understand how important that is to their business. Twite says if everything stays on schedule, Meyer plans to open in April of 2015. She says the suggested opening date would be April 15, 2015, but they have yet to confirm an exact day. When WBKB Early Morning returns, we've been talking a lot about the upcoming Thunder Bay Film Festival, and Stephanie Gondola is here with even more details before it begins tomorrow. Welcome back, I'm Ashley Reed. As I mentioned, the Thunder Bay Film Festival is coming up this weekend and Stephanie Gondula from the Marine Sanctuary is back to talk a little more about that. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Ashley. Now, you, you've been here with Kelsey for the past couple weeks, mm -hmm. kind of talking more specifics on the film festival and all that it has to offer. Now, I was hoping to switch gears a little bit and tell me how this film festival is beneficial to the community here in Alpena. That's really a great question, Ashley. So, a film festival, they, they are really they're really popular these days. I mean, they've been around for decades, but they, they're really popping up all over the country as a tourism driver. Mm -hmm. And so what, what we're focusing on is not only making it a, a fun thing for, a fun and educational thing for uh, locals and, and folks from, you know, Northeast Michigan to enjoy and learn from, but also something to bring people into the right. community. And we, that's big here in Alpena, the push for tourism. Absolutely, so. absolutely. And we've gotten some amazing, um, press from uh, the actually from the the Detroit Free Press Good. and um, of course our amazing press locally and and some really big interest from around the state so we're excited about that okay so you're hoping this is kind of something that continues to grow absolutely throughout the years. absolutely it's just building and building each year this is the second Great. year we've done it and then next year we're hoping to have um, student competitions and it just every year get bigger and bigger perfect and you and Kelsey talked about how this is something that the whole family can come to enjoy what are some of the things that the children can really come and take part in well um, it is a family friendly event for the whole weekend I think Sunday's uh, focus would be lots of fun for a family okay. because you can come and enjoy not only the, the movies in the theater but you can also enjoy the the science on a sphere films perfect which are great for kids there's going to be a free giveaway for for kids um on in, during the film about the solar system and there's also a special feature at two o'clock on sunday and it it's going to feature lots of local students and teachers okay and that's all about um, place-based education here in michigan and so i think that's going to be a great one for lots of students and, and teachers and parents to come and enjoy Okay, and I saw that Mayor Matt Wallagore proclaimed this week as Thunder Bay Film Festival Week, so that was pretty exciting, oh, right? We were thrilled. We were thrilled. The committee was thrilled. Um, I, I guess that does mean we will be continuing to do the, the Thunder Bay Film Festival, but I think that really shows the, the overall community support of, of a new event here right. in Alpena. Okay, and you said tickets are still available, correct? Yes, yes they are selling. Um, they're available in our sanctuary store. Um, come in any time between 10 and 5. And the tickets are $25 for tomorrow night's show and opening reception. And then $10 all day for Saturday, $10 all day for Sunday. Student price is for $5. Okay. And you can get a weekend pass for $40. Okay, and then it begins tomorrow. What time is the first film? The first film, the op doors open tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And then we have the nice opening reception, um, cash bar, and some uh, light hors d'oeuvres. And then the movies start at 7 o'clock. Okay, and then that will continue through Sunday. So thank you, Stephanie. We're nice. all looking forward to that. Well, stay tuned because sports is next with Shannon McGratton. She'll have basketball highlights from ACC and local high schools. Plus, show us how the Hurons and Owls did last night in wrestling.
Now that classes are back in session, Alpena Community College basketball players can get back on the court. And with a rigorous schedule the rest of the season, the Lady Lumberjacks were hoping to continue their current two-game home winning streak. However, the Wildcats came out stealing last night, allowing Chantel Jones to extend her team's lead to six. Three minutes later, April Douglas gets the layup, making it a 12-0 game halfway through the first half. But once the clock hit nine minutes, Alpina was able to get some shots, starting with Allie Sexton, who makes the jumper to put the Jacks on the board. Whitney Frazier getting the bucket and foul shortly after, helping Alpina end the half down three. But in the second half, the Lady Jacks were unable to take the lead, falling last night 61-45. Later last night, the men took the court, picking it up in the second half. Jack's down 10 when Trayvon Howard tries the backhanded layup, which Steven Shepard tips in at the start of the second half. However, on the next play, Montel Williams has the moves, dunking his team back into a 10-point lead. Shortly after, it's Wildcats' Darrell Jackson taking matters into his own hands before Howard does a little one to step in to bring the Jacks within eight. But like the women, the men were unable to come back, falling 80-58 last night. And in high school hoops, Onaway hosted Joburg. Early on, the home Cardinals' Lexi Shimoniak brings Onaway within three. But on the other end, Joburg's Brittany Shewinsky has a response to give the visiting cards an 8-3 lead. A minute later, Devin Brisley makes two of her game-high 21 points, starting a run for Onaway, which is followed by Erica Price, putting her cards up by three with 90 seconds left in the first. But as the clock winds down, Haley Weaver helps her team end the quarter on top before Joburg goes on to win. 55-58 was the final up north last night. Finally, in girls' action, Tawas topped Oscoda 61-27. Jenna Sostak finished with 12, and Courtney Flory had 11. While over in Atlanta, Hillman won 63-10. Jensen Chorzinski had a game-high 22 points, extending the, Tigers lead, extending the Tigers' winning streak to two games. Moving to the NCAA, down in Ann Arbor, John Beeline. Pacing as Michigan looks to remain undefeated in the Big Ten. Up to five minutes in, but tying the game at seven is Melshawn Basabi. At the end of the first half, however, Karis Levert gets the steal, giving Michigan another lead before going into the half up four. Right out of the locker room, Nick Stoskis shoots from three-point range with ease, making it 41-34 Michigan. And icing the cake is Glenn Robinson the third. Michigan will fight for sole custody for first place in the Big Ten with State on Saturday after winning 75-67 last night. Moving to the wrestling mat, the Hurons and Oscoda Owls were each looking for a pair of wins, starting with Oscoda and Rudyard at 103 pounds. Austin Poland gets his first win of the night before ending yesterday 2-0, while Josh Ward helps the Owls shortly after with a pin. And on the other mat, Roger City was taking on Gaylord. Huron's Jared LaFleche wins his match before Justin Saley gets his first of two wins. And when the night was over, Oscoda wrestlers Robbie Elman, Alec Poland, Ben Rays, Ray Siebisch, and Josh Ward finished undefeated, while Harry Simotis also finished 2-0 with an overtime win as Oscoda beat Rudyard 42-29 and Gaylord 39-35. The hosting Hurons had a good night as well, beating both Rudyard and Gaylord 48-15. Justin Bobert, Jared LaFleche, Justin Saley, Andrew Selke, Jacob and Noah Sobeck, and Cameron Urban finished 2-0. And in professional sports, the Pistons fell to the Bucks last night, 104-101, while the Red Wings finished regulation tied at four with the Blackhawks before going on to win 5-1. Both teams will play on Friday. That's it for your morning sports. Kelsey, back to you. Thanks, Shannon. For a look at what we can expect outside today, let's turn it over to meteorologist Adam Claibon. Adam? All right, thank you, Kelsey. Again, uh, temperatures, they are beginning to cool off, and that's all because of this system that is starting to push off towards the east, and we'll see that colder air start to drag in behind it. So these tips right here, they'll be actually cooler during the afternoon, expect them right around single digits. Currently at 5 degrees in Gaylor, 8 degrees here in Alpena, 11 in Tawa City. So that cold air will start to filter in, and we'll start to see more of a northwesterly flow pick up to right around 10, maybe 15 miles per hour. Right now, temperatures are really cool back towards the Midwest and going into the northern plains. Three
degree to below in Bismarck as well as in Minneapolis. So that colder air already to start to make its presence known there. And that colder air will continue to push on towards the east, but it's going to scoot out of here very quickly because it will have another system that will start to come from Canada and that will actually start to pick pick to pick temps back up in the 20s for afternoon highs by tomorrow. But current, current satellite and radar or current radar right here is showing that most of the snow isn't being shown up on here. We've been having light flurries throughout the overnight and some area pockets of light snow showers. But there is a band starting to make its way from the northeast and is coming farther to the south. And that's one we're going to have to watch out for as it goes into Rogers City and into Posen could provide some heavy snowfall for about an hour or two, but that will provide maybe a quick inch to the region. While we've already seen about an inch or two throughout the overnight all across northeast Michigan, this system is starting to depart now to the east and we'll be seeing that cold air filter in and drier air. So expect things to really start to clear out for us in terms of the snow. Snow will start to pick a let up by the afternoon. Looking at our current winds, three miles per hour from the southeast in Oscoda, three also in Houghton Lake. These will begin to change and we'll see more of that northwesterly direction by later during the afternoon. And that's what is going to be bringing us those colder wind chills, which are currently at 8 degrees in Alpena, 2 in Oscoda, and 7 below in Gaylor. We will be all below zero by tonight. What's ahead for us? Well, it will be a snowy and cold start. Winds will begin to pick back up and snow will begin to ease during the afternoon. Sub-zero temperatures, here we come yet again as we're projected to be anywhere between maybe 2 to 7 degrees below zero. And as we take a look at our setup, this area of low pressure weakens as it does head east. The snow showers will be mostly confined to the western shores of lower Michigan. By the time it is all said and done later on during the day, we would have seen right around 1 to 3 inches across our viewing area. And our future cast showing that the intense cold is holding on, but it will start to subside a little bit with the snow showers as we get into Friday's forecast. It goes away. Away, and it'll start to fade away with the incoming snow showers. And then by the time sat Saturday rolls around yet again, we'll see more snow and the cold air starts to filter in right behind that. Today, our day planner will start off with the snow during the morning and then die by the afternoon, expected to start to let up a little bit. Tonight's temperatures will be pretty chilly. Seven below zero west southwest winds at five to ten miles per hour. So already starting to see that wind shift back from the west southwest in front of our system that will be coming in late Friday. High of 19 degrees and back in the upper teens on Saturday before much colder air arrives by the start of next week, 9 Sunday, and then starting to see more of the single digits on Monday with snow. Only small chances on Monday and Tuesday. Thanks, Adam. Coming up next on WBKB Early Morning, the former NSA contractor accused of leaking secretive information will be available online today to answer questions from the public. More on that after the break. Good morning and welcome back. I'm Ashley Reed. The former NSA contractor accused of leaking secret information hasn't talked much since escaping the U.S. and eventually settling in Russia. But today you can chat directly with Edward Snowden. Marley Hall has the details from New York. Edward Snowden will answer questions from the public Senior online advisor. today about his role in exposing secret U.S. surveillance programs. One question U.S. officials want to know is how much help did he receive from foreign intelligence sources? My questions about his work with uh, Chinese and Russian intelligence begin once he arrives in Hong Kong and then when he moved on to Moscow. Wednesday, Snowden denied he had any help, telling The New Yorker magazine the claims are absurd. A new CBS News survey shows 61 percent of those polled believe Snowden should stand trial for espionage. 23 percent say he should be granted amnesty. But as the White House reiterated yesterday, that's not likely to happen. It is our firm position that he ought to return to the United States uh, and face the charges against him. But the Snowden leaks have forced changes to the way the NSA operates. Last week, President Obama announced the NSA will still collect Americans' phone data in the fight against terror. But the president says agents will now need a judge's approval to access it, and he no longer wants the agency to store the information. The president says he's trying to balance the need for intelligence while still upholding American civil liberties. Marley Hall for CBS News, New York. Snowden is expected to answer questions during a live chat this afternoon at 3 Eastern on the website Free Snowden. You can submit questions via Twitter using the hashtag AskSnowden. And now we're going to take one last look at weather. What do you have for us, Adam?
All right, thank you, Kelsey. Again, eight degrees outside, seeing that foggy kind of flurry action going on throughout the uh, throughout the morning right now currently, but also we have some snow showers that have moved through the area and have provided that inch or two on our cars. So make sure you do take uh, the time that you need before you head out to your car so you can be able to brush it off and warm it up because temperatures are still pretty cold and will only be colder throughout the afternoon, only expecting a high of around five degrees. And as we take a look at our radar right here, not much show, snow showing up on the map. But we'll continue to notice that these snow showers that we have been seeing throughout the night, they will dwindle. And also, there's like a lake effect band right here. It's continuing to sag farther and farther to the south. So watch out, Roger City and Posen, as that does start to make its way in here. But the satellite radar shows us the big, bigger picture as this area of low pressure will push off towards the east. That will allow the colder air to drag in right behind that. But it's only going to be a short-lived event because today's highs, they will be in the single digits. Five degrees with that snow beginning to taper off during the afternoon and maybe just flurry by tonight, but hey, by the time we head into tomorrow's forecast, here comes the warmer air, slightly warmer air. Highs will be back closer to normal right around the middle 20s. Well, I guess both Adam and Shannon forgot my name today. I don't think there used to be being here in the morning, but be sure to tune in tonight for WBKB 11 News at 6 for updates in news, sports, and weather. Felina Jones and Lindsay Adeluka have the latest in local news. Meteorologist Adam Claibon will have the weather, and Shannon McGratton will have updates from the world of sports. Also, don't forget you can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on other news items online. Just visit WBKB11.com for sports weather and news updates anytime, day or night. Or add us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash WBKBTV. That's all we have for you today on WBKB Early Morning. Thanks for watching. Good Morning America is up next.